Hello, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm excited because of my co-host, Michael Lee. Michael Lee is the business relations business relations manager for All Dry Service of North County, San Diego. Basically, you're a restoration company, right, Michael? Yes, handling emergency water mitigation and mold remediation services. Yeah, so when when we need you, we need you like right now. There is no like, hey, I'll I'll be back to you next week. It's like, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> when, when you're needed, you, you're needed right away. Yep, as you experienced, the minute my phone rings, I pick that up because I know it may be something, someone having like the worst time of their life. Yeah, and we want to make sure that they're taken care of. Well, it's great that you're joining us. So Michael's been in San Diego for roughly seven plus years coming from the Windy City. And just a little bit ago, Michael shared a fun fact with me, and I'm going to ask him to share it again. So when uh, Michael is from the Windy City or Chicago, and we were talking about the element of the Windy City, and he shared with me a fun fact. It is not, it is not about the weather. That's not the Windy City part. Michael, share with us, what is, what's that little uh, tidbit of information on the Windy City? Yeah, so it's it's a bit of a dig at us, actually, because when our politicians were campaigning to have the World's Fair in Chicago, uh, they just would not stop talking. So all of the movement from their mouths produced so much wind that we were named the Windy City. A lot of hot air coming out. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for joining us. I'm I'm excited about our topic today on doing an effective one to one. Uh, both you and I, I mean, you as a newer member to BNIS Contito, one of our, our fantastic chapters here in San Diego, mm-hmm. and you've experienced uh, the element of doing one-to-ones, both with brand new people coming into the chapter, but also with seasoned members. And I, I know you well enough because you're all in on BNI and very engaged. And you've I've seen you on speed networking events mm-hmm. and dif- different coaching calls and all kinds of things. So you've experienced some uh, one-to-ones both inside your chapter, but also with people outside your chapter. And then we're even going to take it further to, to, to take it outside of B and I. And when we go to meet with a colleague or a potential client and all those types of things, but as a, as a, a newer B and I member slash referral partner, uh, on the side of one-to-ones, when you think of a one-to-one, what's a one-to-one supposed to be to you? To me, at the very core of it, a one-to-one should be a, I mean, it should have two things. It should be educational. I should learn at least something from that one-to-one that I did not know before. And I want to have a call to action at the very end. Yeah. You know, just just something to move on from there other than having just a great, you know, meeting with whoever this was. You know, let's face it. Sometimes people think a one-to-one is, hey, let's go grab some coffee or a beer and talk and or or let's go golfing. While those things are great, on the business side of things, for us in B&I, a one-to-one is supposed to be very intentional. As you said, Mm -hmm. you want to come away with a couple of things, and that's learning about your your partner, who you're going to be doing the one-to-one with. And then ideally at the end, coming coming out with an action plan for both of you so that you can help each other grow your business. Right. Right. It, it is mutual. It's a, it's a relationship and those have both give and take. Ah, very good. Which goes along with our, our givers gain uh, core value that everything mm-hmm. we do is we show up to give and then we're going to get back. And, and that's what we're doing in a one-to-one as well is getting to know about that person on the other side of the table or on the other side of the screen, as we see right now. <laughs> Exactly. You know, thank God for the 21st century. That's it, right? Where we are, it's where it's all about innovation and, and kind of moving forward. So, okay, mm-hmm. let's let's dive into kind of a one to one. And I know you've got a couple of key points that you kind of wanted to talk about. Yes. So, when it comes to preparing myself for my one to ones or preparing for like a follow up one to one, I usually gravitate towards uh, three core questions. And I think they kind of help my, keep myself organized. Okay. And they also make sure that I'm keeping the meeting, you know, productive and oriented towards helping the partner that I'm talking to and making sure that we have something planned moving forward. And it doesn't just, you know, stop our momentum there. So I usually make sure that I get to, or that I have questions prepared. So that way I've learned something new, yeah. either about that person's industry or about them personally. Uh, I want to find a shared industry or shared people within our contact spheres. 
Yeah. And then I usually want to figure out what it is that we're doing together next. And that doesn't have to be you know, necessarily a direct one-to-one. That could be connecting with someone in our contact sphere. That could be meeting at a networking event. That could be doing a social element. You know, but it just, just making sure there's another step. Oh, and, and I love that because, and, and I'm going to ask you a, a quick question. So in, at least in B&I and in the way that we do things, do you know what the number one, and you may already know this, do you know what the number one thing, uh, what's the most important thing in a one-to-one or during a one-to-one? Any ideas? Uh, Just take a couple it... guesses. Couple of guests. Okay. Most important thing is it setting up like a referral, like a okay. That's close. A warm that's, introduction. That's good, right? Because with doing a one to one, the goal is to get to know the other person, and then in your from your network and what you get to know about them, mm-hmm. it's like how can you now refer to them, or how can you begin to build those relationships that now can bring them referrals or or those warm right. introductions. So that's close, but no, that's not it. It's. I'm, I'm going to give it to you, so you don't have to. to <laughs> Thank you. To Please think about stop it my well. suffering, Ed. And and it's kind of funny. It's actually setting up the next one to one. Wow. The most important thing, and and, yeah. and obviously that comes at the end. But it's something that you said early on that you know it, it may not be the first or the second, right? Which means that there's going to be multiple opportunities to get to know each other. It's never just kind of a one and done. Okay, I've had my one-to-one. We know about each other and that's it. We're always learning new things. We're always adapting and growing, whether it's in our business or our personal life. And, you know, on the restoration side, you know, there's quite a bit there. So there's, you know, you're not going to learn everything on the first round. Oh, no. I tried so hard, Ed. My my commercials were so jam-packed full of information when I started because I just wanted to make sure people knew everything they could about the industry. But it was just, it was too much, honestly. Too much. Yeah, no, it's, it's, just, it's just, information overload. Information, and they just were only retaining like one or two things. So I really, I, I took that to heart. And that is for you know, every conversation, not just uh, just our 30 second presentation it's like if you overload someone with too much information they're only going to retain like a fraction of what you tell them and who is that hurting i mean it's hurting you as as the one trying to educate people yeah. you want to give it to them in packages that they're going to be able to retain yeah, those bite-sized chunks mm-hmm. yeah because again you know, we get so excited because we come in and we're we're starting to build relationships. We're seeing people that we want to get to know. And then we get there in front of them. And and, and trust me, I, I did this when I came in 18 plus years ago into B&I, where I would do an information dump on people. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited that I wanted to get everything out, like you said. And it comes out in such a way they're like, whoa, whoa, it's like drinking from a fire hose. And then you get someone who's a mentor. I had someone years ago tell me, Ed, you got you to take a deep breath and realize that building a relationship is done over time. It's not all done on that first meeting. It's going to take time. So again, that leads to the next one-to-one and the next one and and being able to, to build those relationships. So yeah, I, I'm right there with you on that one. Awesome. So, so we have this little thing called a one-to-one work planner, right? Got it. Yeah, you got it right there on the screen. Oh, no. It's there hard it to see. There you go. There you go. Yep. And, and when you went through that, what are some of the things that you learned about yourself in preparing for a one-to-one? Yeah, so this one, the B, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think the first, like, two pages were the hardest for me to fill out because it's just all of the personal information. So, one, the bio sheet is, like, you know, your basic information, stuff about your family, things that people may be able to connect with. Uh, but my favorite part is the miscellaneous because those are the my burning desire, uh, something no one knows about me and my key to success because those are kind of more reflective of how people approach what it is that they do or how they approach life. It really gives you more of a, a view into their personality. Yeah, it's almost like a peek behind the curtain. To learn mm-hmm. really a little also, bit about them. Yeah. And then something no one knows about me. Great conversation starter for a one-to-one. 
Always. Okay. Like, like so, regardless of situation. So since you shared it, what is something that no, or at least that I may not know about you today? Uh, what did I put on there? Oh, yeah. My, my interesting fact is I am a participant in a longitudinal study from a museum in Chicago viewing how uh, teenagers... Uh, uh, viewing teenagers' perspectives on science as they grow up. Ooh, which is why you're out of this world with the, your background right now, right? Exactly. <laughs> a, I was naturally drawn to it. How could I not? Uh, exactly. I love that. That's awesome. Right? So it's an opportunity. That, that, little, that little tidbit is an opportunity to get to learn something, which in turn is an opportunity to build commonality, right? When people get to know different aspects of our hobbies, our likes, our dislikes. It's the, the goal is to really build commonality because when the moment we build commonality, it's no longer a sale or that it now we're, we're delving into the relationship side of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit more. So the, I'll say, I was going to say those, that one's my favorite part of the bio sheet. And then the gains worksheet also amazing because it really does give you just so many places to find commonality. Like you were saying, some goals, again, more personality based accomplishments. This kind of gives you an idea of how this person approaches their workflow, their, their, you know, five-year plan, however you want to pitch it interests, another way to connect. I've connected with so many people just on their personal interests that yeah. I, I you know I am a, interest collector like i always jump from topic to topic or i love learning about things that i've never really experienced with yeah so i really flesh that one out because people love talking about the things they're already passionate about lifelong uh, learning and, as we call that in vni yes and then networks networks is a great one as well you know so why is I, network why is that that and i like that why is that mm -hmm. a, a crucial one from what you've experienced so far well you know me yet i'm a serial networker so I, yes, I love being invited to new groups, getting a sample of their culture, seeing if there's, you know, people that I know who would benefit from this, ways that I may be getting involved or, you know, if it, if it may not be necessarily the best group for me to join, I can still learn about it and see if potentially people in my contact sphere, you know, may benefit from this organization. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's so hard to know what organizations people are a part of without just directly asking them. So that gives you a great jumping off point to say like, oh, hey, this is an organization I was interested in or one that is close to my industry or one that I may personally be passionate about. And getting involved in shared organizations is another great way to build familiarity and relationships, like you said. Well, yeah, because it really begins, you, you begin to bond with somebody else outside of the normal you know, topics of, of conversation. So knowing, knowing and building that commonality or what was the word you used, the familial, that, you know, that element of, of becoming familiar with people, yes. but doing it via our shared interest. And man, it's great. And, and that's why with our one-to-one uh, -one work planner or our one-to-one -one planner rather, that we, you know, we, we go through and we spend some time delving into it kind of uh, even even kind of a retrospectively looking at ourselves so that we complete the the complete worksheet. And then before we go to do a one-to-one, a -one, which is, this is where a lot of people I've seen miss the mark, is they it, it, you're supposed to send that ahead of time so that somebody has an opportunity to kind of peruse it and, and maybe touch on a couple different items that caught their attention. You know, how, let, let me ask you this, Michael, how many times, let's say in the past, you know, because you've been in BNI now for what, six plus months? Almost. I think I, I think I officially joined in like mid-March. So, so yeah, you're getting, so for our listeners, we're getting a, a very good perspective from a brand new person coming in and taking a look at things. So let me ask you this, Michael, because I, I, I know that you do, when you do a one-to-one, -one, that planner is out ahead of time. And so they have an opportunity to get to know you, but let me ask you this and you don't have to give names obviously, but how many times have when, when you've scheduled a one-to-one -one with someone, how many times have you received one? Uh, 
fair. It's a like 50 50 shot. And I'll be honest, Ed, I, I do a lot of one to ones across chapters. Chapter? Too. Yeah. So this isn't like one specific yeah. chapter. It's, yeah, no, absolutely. It's something I've seen across a lot of chapters. And it's not that I don't have productive meetings with these members. It's yeah. just, it takes a little bit more poking and prodding to get some of that well, yeah, information. Because you're not prepared ahead of time. So right. let, let's take let's take this outside of BNI. And when we want to go and get to know a company, what do we do? So when, when we're going to go meet, whether it's a potential client or someone that we're looking to get to know about uh, a, a little bit about, outside of BNI, what we may end up doing is we may do a little poking on social media and looking at, you know, LinkedIn, who they're connected with. We may look for, we may Google them and, and do a little bit of bio research so that when we come to sit at the table with them, whether it's a client or just someone you're wanting to build a business relationship with, you're coming prepared. Mm. And, and when you come in prepared and you know a little bit about that person, how does it make them feel when you meet them for the first time? It, it shows that you were had intention yeah. of like meeting with them specifically. You're not just coming to them, going to give them the same old spiel that you give to every person that you talk to because you, you tailored it to them. Yeah. Then it's not about a sale. It's about a relationship, mm-hmm. which goes a, a lot longer way. And for, for some, from someone who myself, who I've been on that side where I had met someone for the very first time, even again, outside of B&I, someone that did a little bit of background. And when we sat and met, they actually knew a couple of things about, it, and I was kind of blown away. And it, it actually made me feel good because as you said, and I love this word, you said they were very intentional about why we were here. You know, and, and sometimes I'll never forget. I, so I used to live in Tucson, Arizona. I lived there for about 15 years. And, and when I was there, I was getting to know someone. And on our first visit, I had reached out to him and said, hey, you know, I've, I've heard a little bit about you. I've got some, we've got some mutual friends and colleagues. I'd love to get to know you. We sat down uh, for coffee, actually at a Barnes and Nobles cafe in Tucson, Arizona. And we we sat down and we, I introduced myself and he introduced himself. And then his question was, hey, Ed, why are we here? Hmm. And then I was able to, because I did a little bit of research on him, I was sharing with him, you know, I, 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 I learned a little bit about you from some of our mutual colleagues and friends. And it really piqued my interest. And I wanted to get to know you and how I can help you with your business but ultimately, I just wanted to get to know you. And we had a phenomenal conversation. And now we're like longtime friends because of it. Nice. But it was because I was intentional right. about coming into it. And that's kind of what we're talking about today, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that, that gives someone a, a jumping point, essentially. Like he, he was coming into this meeting with you unaware really of what it was you were trying to do. Like, is this work is this you know is this personal uh and you let him know you're like well this is a little bit of both but like i really came here to know you as the person so this is a relationship based meeting and he was like oh okay yeah, yeah. i you've interested me enough ed and you guys developed a beautiful relationship but you let him know right away what you were trying to do and that he made that decision yeah and it's important right to know that you know when when we're establishing that connection you know uh, right up front kind of letting him know and and wanting to build those relationships. That's awesome. Because let's face it, we're all busy. We all have too many biz- meetings and things that are going on. Yeah. And, and when someone engages us about a conversation, we're basically taking their time from something else that they can be doing. Mm. So we want to make sure that it's a productive time. Right. And, and I love like when you sent your, you know, your one-to-one planner over to me, it allows me to kind of look at you a little bit and get to know you a little bit so that there are some key things that I can touch on and talk about. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I love that our conversation is, is really tailored today uh, more for the, for the, the BNI member on, you know, really how to do an effective one-to-one and that's having that planner setting it, uh, making sure that it gets to the person a couple of days in advance. And then you've got some talking points as we talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know but, what, you know, in, in doing one-to-ones with people, you know, what are some of the things that you really enjoy, you know, when you're doing one-to-ones with people? 
one of the big things is going over their passions. I, I pick up pretty quickly on when people start getting excited about a topic yeah. or, you know, body language, it, right? Yeah. Or they'll literally put it in here. You know, they'll <laughs> say like, this is one of my top passions. This is one of the things I love to do in my free time. And I love talking to people about that because it, if it's something I'm not familiar with, I get to learn a little bit about, you know, whatever, which is always fun. But also it gives me an idea of, you know, what it is this person values or what they find fun. It's just, it's a really good way to learn more about a person as a whole, you know, when they do what they do, when they are having fun, what they yeah. do to unwind. Um, so that's a good one for me. And, you know, for the, from the business perspective too, that also helps me think of people in my contact sphere that might work well with this person or, you know, industries, opportunities. I, doing networking, I run into so many different organizations that contribute to so many different communities that there's always going to be probably one that may help someone or one oh that they may be passionate about and want to contribute to and just don't know about it yet. To be, able to, to be able to be a connector for people is huge. But in order to connect those people, you've got to know a little bit about them. Right. And that's why this topic of one-to-ones is so important and really getting to know they're, they're the business side of them, but also that personal side. And, and, you know, let me ask you this question, and I know we're going to be coming to a close here in just a little bit, but have you ever found that when you're doing a one-to-one with someone and whether it's a hobby or something they they like doing, it like piques your interest and then they kind of introduce you to it. And it's like, that becomes a new passion of yours and a new fun thing. Oh, I'm so excited to get to that point. I've already been <laughs> offered surf lessons, a jujitsu session. So I know that you, uh, I know else? that in your chapter, you've got Phil Jordan. Have you done a one-to-one with Phil Jordan? Yes. Phil was actually my mentor. So I, and, I got to. And did he, did he talk about his, uh, uh, what is it? Frisbee golf? We haven't gotten to touch on his frisbee oh, golf. Oh, you got to wait. You gotta, just, yeah. that, that's one. Of, he's something he enjoys that that just allows them to relax and have fun. So make sure that when you get to do a one-to-one with Phil Jordan, that I mention, Hey, we need to go uh, do a little bit of Frisbee golf and you'll just see him light up. It's awesome to watch. All right. Now that we've had a few one-to-ones that may have to be one of ours. There you go. There's a lot of good social time there as well. Yeah. And and I like how you put that, right? We do the the first couple one-to-ones we might meet at each other's office or for coffee, but then even planning a fun one-to-one. Now that we've gotten yeah. to know each other a little bit, now let's go do something that we both enjoy, but also talking a bit of business as well. I mean, let's face right. it, golf for a lot of people is a business kind of environment, right? You, you get to spend a good four hours with someone. Uh, so why not talk about business? So that's always in, in the business side of things. You know, I thing. think I think that also goes to show you how much business, how much real business has always been relational golf, right? People always talk about how much business gets done on the golf course. And, you know, that was before people started really pinching about referral or relationship sales, relational sales. I like that. I didn't even think about that one. So it really does. I mean, and let's face it, the best way to do business is with, with it from the relational standpoint. Right. Yeah. It's not transactional. It's relational. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know that, in the coming future, we're going to have a couple other topics to talk about. So I'm looking wow. forward to having you on with us. And it's been such a pleasure getting to know you in, in the chapter setting, but I'm also looking to get to know you on the personal side as well, because you're you're uh, what my dad calls kind of the salt of the earth kind of person that just that good guy, right? And Thanks. one of the things that I'm really excited about you is you're a young entrepreneur, someone coming in, you know, fresh out of college and coming into the the business environment uh i i'm beyond excited i wish i wish i was you went well way back then it's been a little <laughs> while since i was that age but you know it, it's nice to see someone who's just got it and understands it and gets it and, and is really all in on working on how can i help you kind of mentality i've had a lot of really good teachers and a lot of really good mo- role models since i've joined yeah. bni ed so i can you know Another way to throw it back to me and I, because it's been an amazing experience. Well, my friend, it's been great. Thank you again for joining us. For our listeners, thank you for joining us for this fun conversation. Uh, it's always a pleasure not only to speak to our amazing BNI members, but someone who's becoming a friend and a great colleague. 
uh, and someone who I have a, a lot of great confidence in as well. And just to be able to have a bit of fun. So thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week on another wonderful episode of our BNI San Diego podcast. Again, Michael, thank you for joining us and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. It was a pleasure. You too, Ed. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, my friend. This episode of the BNI San Diego podcast has been brought to you by Cruise Productions, a San Diego-based video production company and proud BNI member. You can find us at the intersection where business and creativity meet or online at cruiseproductionsinc.com.